So now I want to talk about analyses of ancient DNA, for example, um, in this case from Neanderthal. And this is, these are some images of scientists um, working on a Neanderthal fossil. And this type of analysis is very challenging for a number of reasons. One is that um, DNA, that, which is that old, on the order of, say, 30,000 years old to even 100,000 years old, is going to be highly degraded. And if there's any contamination with modern human DNA, that is much more likely to amplify than the old degraded DNA from the um, archaic species. So one has to be extremely careful when analyzing this DNA. Now, more recently, there was a pinky finger bone identified in a cave in Siberia um, from a region called Denisova. So it's called, um, referred to as the Denisova or Denisovan genome. Here I'm presenting a phylogenetic tree based on mitochondrial DNA variation, comparing modern humans shown in blue here to Neanderthal shown in red and the Denisova individual shown in yellow. And what we can see is that the time to most recent common ancestry in humans, as we've already discussed, is about 200,000 years ago. The time to most recent common ancestry um, between humans and Neanderthals is about 500,000 years ago for the mitochondrial DNA lineages. And the time to most recent common ancestry um, with the Denisova mitochondrial DNA lineages is about 1 million years ago. So this is demonstrating a couple of things. From the mitochondrial DNA perspective, there's no evidence of any admixture with um, anatomically modern humans. The Neanderthal sequences are clearly very distinct from modern humans. It's also showing you that there was another species, Denisova, that appears to be distinct from the Neanderthals, and they diverge even earlier than Neanderthals from modern humans. So if we were to compare pairwise nucleotide diversity, um, for example, among anatomically modern humans, shown in blue, you can see that there's not a lot of diversity, as expected, considering that we all have a very recent common ancestry. If you compare the modern human mitochondrial DNA genomes to Neanderthal, you can see that they're more divergent, as expected, given that the lineage, uh, mitochondrial DNA lineage diverged about 500,000 years ago. If we compare it to the Denisovan mitochondrial DNA lineage, they're even more divergent. And then if we compare to chimpanzee, of course, as expected, given that they diverged at least 5 million years ago, they are the most different in terms of um, sequence variation. Now, um, several years ago, there was um, a draft sequence produced of the Neanderthal genome using next-generation sequencing technology. And this was an absolutely amazing feat. But at the time, they had very low coverage, meaning that any particular region of the genome was sequenced only about once or twice. Now, more recently, as the technology has improved, they've gotten much better coverage of the Neanderthal sequence. And quite recently, they now have a 30-fold coverage, meaning that on average, most sites will have been sequenced 30 times. And so you'll have a much better um, accuracy when determining, determining nucleotide variation. So when the Neanderthal genome was compared to the human genome, what you can do is first look at how much divergence has occurred since modern humans uh, differentiated from chimpanzees within the past 6.5 million years. And you can look at the divergence that has occurred specifically in the human lineage since they diverged from Neanderthal. And they've only accumulated about 8% of this total divergence. And so the estimate of the time of population divergence between humans and Neanderthals is about 400,000 years ago. Furthermore, it has been estimated that there may have been a small amount of admixture between Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans, as shown by this red arrow here. So the um, estimated amount of admixture is about 1 to 2 percent of the modern human genome may be of Neanderthal ancestry. But what is of interest is to note that this is only present in non-Africans. It is not present in African genomes. 
And so what we can infer from that is that this admixture event probably occurred before modern humans spread across the globe. It may have occurred, for example, in the Middle East. Um, and that's why we're seeing it in, present in all non-Africans. And we don't see it at all in Africans. Now, more recently, there has been um, whole genome sequencing of the Denisovan individual. And what that has shown is that the Denisovan species, or this individual, appears to have diverged from modern-day humans around 800,000 years ago, consistent with what we saw from the mitochondrial DNA. They also observed low levels of heterozygosity in Denisova, suggesting that they may have had a small population size. Additionally, um, when a phylogenetic tree was constructed from the nuclear DNA variation, they could see that the, the modern humans tend to cluster together, and as we expect, they're divergent from the Denisova and the Neanderthals. The Neanderthals tend to cluster together, so they're clearly divergent from Denisova. But what's interesting is if you look at how much, um, how much variation there is amongst the modern humans, as indicated by the length of these lineages, and then you compare that to Neanderthals, which have very short branches, what that suggests is that there was not a lot of genetic variation amongst the Neanderthals. And therefore, they may have undergone a bottleneck. So they might have undergone a population crash at some point in the past. So in summary, um, what we can see is that Homo erectus left Africa within the past two million years and spread throughout Eurasia, giving rise possibly to species like Homo florensiensis. And surviving until quite recently, as recently as around 25,000 years ago. Then we have um, other species like Neanderthal and Denisovans, who may have originated from a different um, species, such as Hedoburgensis. And they differentiated sometime around six or 700,000 years ago in the case of Denisova or in Neanderthals around 400,000 years ago. And then we have the modern human lineage, um, Homo sapiens, which arose around 200,000 years ago and spread out of Africa. But when they did so, they would have encountered these other species. And there may have then been low levels of gene flow. In fact, for the case of the Denisovan genome, it appears that the gene flow was predominantly with populations from Oceania, um, implying that this admixture may have occurred in a different location and a different time. Now, we still don't know exactly how much admixture there may have been between archaic species um, and modern humans in Africa, but there's some preliminary data suggesting that this has occurred there as well. The problem is that the fossils don't preserve as well in Africa, so we don't have any DNA sequences from archaic lineages in Africa at this point.